We've got an interesting question into our Ask Mark inbox. It says, Hi Mark, I'm starting to learn about electronics and I've seen the term B plus mentioned quite a lot, but nobody explains what it means. Could you define it for me? Thanks in advance, Steve. It's a really good question, Steve. Okay, Steve, to understand the um, B plus, we really need to go back to around 1906 when Lee DeForest created something called the triode vacuum tube. It's a three element tube, thus the term tri. Um, the first uh, element is the anode, sometimes called the plate, and we typically apply a high voltage to that plate. The second connection we have is called the cathode, and this cathode is either usually tied to ground or a very low voltage, and thus your voltage flows through this tube as it would in a diode from the high voltage here to the cathode um, in the tube. And then the third element that Lee DeForest added was something called a control grid, or sometimes typically called the grid. Sometimes um, you'll see G1 because there may be multiple grids in a tube, so you'd have G2, G3. But typically we bias this, or otherwise known as applying a negative voltage to this um, element. And what it does then is it slows down or stops the flow of electrons from the plate to the cathode. And then we kind of modulate that negative signal, that negative voltage with a signal um, which varies the amount that we turn on or off the flow. You, so you could almost think of this as a water hose letting, letting electrons flow through the tube. And then you could think of this as the spigot kind of turning on or off how much water or electrons can flow through the tube. And so if your signal here is small controlling how much you turn on or off the tube, but your plate voltage is very high here, what you start to see if you measure between the plate and the cathode, or the anode and cathode, is you start to see a very large signal that resembles the input signal, um, and that would be your output signal. Thus, that is called amplification. Okay, so in those days, 1906, when this triode was first created, electricity was not in most people's houses. There were no such thing as high voltage power supplies. Rectification did not exist at that point in time. So if you were going to make one of these vacuum tubes operate in the early days, it had to be done via batteries. And they did exist at the time. And you could actually buy specialized batteries made for vacuum tubes. You can see here, this is a 1.4 volt A battery. You can see here, this is a 4.5 volt C battery. And this is a 45 volt B battery. So what you would do is you would connect this B battery between your cathode and your plate here, your anode. And you would put the positive here of this B battery on the plate. You would then connect up an A battery of 1.4 volts between ground and your cathode here uh, to slightly bias it. And then you would connect your C battery of 4.5 volts. You would connect it kind of reverse polarity. So you'd connect the positive to ground and the negative up here to the grid, which would create that negative voltage on the grid that slows down the flow of electrons we talked about earlier. Well, all that's cool, and now you understand a little bit about how a vacuum tube works. But Sooner or later, the batteries went away, and along came, um, you know, AC um, to our houses, AC current, and which then we had power supplies, and we created DC from the power supplies via rectification. But what we never lost was the term B plus, which came from the B battery, the positive terminal here that you put onto the plate of the tube, and thus the high voltage connection that you put onto the plate of a tube these days is still called the B-plus connection. Okay, as you can see here, this is the power supply we used in our single-ended 807 amplifier build. You kind of feed your AC in over here through a transformer. Ultimately, you rectify it here. You bring the rectified voltage out, and then you start filtering it here using capacitors and inductors, capacitors and resistors, uh, CLC and CRC circuits. And ultimately here, at this point right here, you pull off what is called 450 volts of B plus voltage. That voltage then goes from this power supply to the plate of the 807 tube where the um, B plus voltage is at. However, this amplifier also has a front end, um, a preamp in it, that doesn't use 450 volts on the plates of those tubes. It uses more like 350 volts on one of the, or two of the tubes, and 300 volts on one of the other. 
So we've got to have multiple B plus voltages in this amplifier. So this power supply basically drops the voltage down via this dropping resistor to 350 volts. And then we call that B++. It's just another way of annotating that we have a second B plus voltage in this circuit that isn't the same as the first B plus voltage. And the same here, we drop the voltage again to 300 volts um, to feed one of the tubes in this that needs that amount. And um, we call that B++. Um, or B++++. <laughs> Um, so it's just another B plus voltage there. So you can have multiple B plus voltages at multiple levels. But hopefully this lets you understand the B plus is just a, they could call this plate voltage, plate voltage, plate voltage. Sometimes in Europe you'll see it called HT, stands for high tension or high voltage. Um, but in the U.S. we typically see the nomenclature of B plus. Hope this explains it for you, Steve, and anyone else watching this video. Hope you learned something. I had fun making this video, and that's what it's all about. So thanks for watching, everyone.